so today we have um, we have in the studio we have Mr. Sewan Kambo Isma. Yeah, he's a very prominent forex trader here in Uganda. Uh, he's a man who has mentored and taught so many people here in Uganda and even in other countries. He has done so much for the forex community in Uganda and uh, I couldn't be happier to have him on the show today. Yeah, so, uh, Mr. Isma, yes, it's good to have you on the show. Uh, Privilege and humble, uh, Mr. Makune. So happy. So, uh, I would like to know, how did you start out in forex trading? How did you discover this, um, this activity, this economic activity? How did you discover forex trading? Um, how did it start? Well, what were the challenges you faced and how did you come to embrace it? Okay. Uh, thanks for the question. Well, it all starts in one day here. Surprisingly. Okay. <laughs> one day. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Kubitala. Okay. Uh, hope you know that place. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Um, I'm a person who likes uh, computer. Okay. okay. I, my passion is actually surfing. I like more of surfing. I like computing, in other words. Well, uh, as I, I studied from uh, Deje University, and I used to stay in Kawempe with my grandma. Wow. And you, you know when you're from Deje and you're approximating to, uh, <laughs> uh, to Kawempe, yes. there is that, uh, uh, you, uh, you pass by a, or a Kubitala. Yes, you need to pass through one day. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> now, uh, I used to pass there in Itaku every day. And I used to, so alongside, there is a certain bank where I used to see a guy who, could put on, who used to put on a cap on his laptop. And I used to wonder, that is it really possible for someone to make money using their laptop? <laughs> yes, after all, if there is one, uh, uh, probably they could be programming, they could be, you know, hacking, something of the sort. And I desired so much, of course, earning from the, uh, from the internet using my laptop. Now, as I was at campus, I have a friend, my friend is called Dean, and I used to, we are very close friends, and uh, there is that one day when Dean came with his laptop and he's like, you know, we used to do a lot of research, you know. Uh, you see, in IT, I did, I did IT. Okay. We used to do a lot of research, you know. So there's that day when he comes at the balcon. I remember we were at the balcon. He comes with his laptop. You know, man, you see, I've made 50 bucks. I was like, man, what's the whole thing? You know, all I could see were basically candles. <laughs> I was like, man, can you really teach me how to do these things? was like, no, 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 man, these things are not for you. He shut, <laughs> shut the laughter. I was like, man, when will you ever teach me how to do these things? I was like, no, I can't teach you. Anyway, we shall have time, then I teach you. But of course, you have, you know, it's quite, uh, it's quite um, difficult and complex, of yeah, course, uh, due to complex. the charts, the graphs. I used to see the moving averages. By then, I didn't know what moving averages <laughs> were. I didn't know what candles were, and probably, you know, the whole thing, of course, when the whole chat is new to you. Yeah. Now, we reached that point, then I finished campus, and then, of course, I'm like, man, can you teach me? He's like, yes, of course, he was training some other guys. Mm -hmm. I was like, man, uh, yeah, it's okay, you can come as you train with these guys. Then, I started the training with him, of course, with the other guys. Of course, as we reached Amidis, the training was like, man, you guys, why don't you catch up? Because, you, you, you know, you're not speaking. Can you please put in all that is, you know, required for you to learn? Then, of course, I tried. I tried my level best. I had to prove this guy wrong, that I can do this to my best. Then, I tried, I tried. I did extensive research. I remember, like, going home and used not to sleep, but going for extension. And my sister was like, man, what, have you, what are you doing all day? Like, you know, you... You spend sleepless nights, they, you are on your laptop. I used to have like a small laptop. Mm -hmm. Then, of course, I learned, I learned, I learned so much. After, after like a year, um, after like a year, uh, Nail One Academy guys called me, of course. I trained some other guys. Of course, I had a lot of information on me because <laughs> I bought books, I went for videos, I went for online courses. You know, I also uh, went for a mentorship from this friend of mine and forth, you know. I did extensive research. I put in a lot, honestly, no. to at least, uh, I reached to the point whereby I formulated my own course outline that if someone is really going to learn this, because firstly, in life, I wanted to be popular. <laughs> so I thought, actually, I told it to my assistant. Yeah. I was like, I want to be popular. 
and I want uh, to be popular via YouTube, of course. Okay. Then, before Forex, I started with motivation speaking ah. speeches, like <laughs> I could download uh, motiva motivation speeches for various motivation speakers. Okay. I was like, man, I think this is the mode that can at least disclose me to the world. Then when I got into Forex, I was like, man, now this is the best time, this is the right time for me to go into uh, the public, at least for the public to know me. That's why I'm at least trying my level best to post each and everything that I know on social media, on YouTube, such that at least people learn and also uh, accomplish with my desire of being at least disclosed to each and every person, like each and every person knows me. Okay. Yeah, so when I reached at that point, I was there and some guy came to me, he was a friend. Actually, I told her she was a friend. She, she, she was a friend. She came to me, she's like, man, there is uh, an academy and they're looking out for tutors. Can you really uh, do tutoring, you know, or at, at a big level, like at an advanced level where guys can sit and you train? I was like, yes, I can do that. Because remember, I generated my course outline. <laughs> then I go to Nile One Academy. Of course, I knew everything. I knew, you know, I knew how to deliver. I knew everything, okay? I knew the deposits, the withdraw. Actually, the first day I went in for the, into the classes, into for, into for classes, I made, I traded and deposited, okay? Then we, we deposited, we traded, and then we withdrew. The guys were like, yeah, this thing really works out. This thing really works out. Because there are so many people out there that don't believe in these things. Yeah, yes. So my journey starts, I start, I start working with Nile One Academy. Nile One Academy develops. Look, of course, I meet so many people, I train so many people, and really guys are making, we are making money out of my trainings. And I remember a time going in for classes and I find guys, you know, having bought themselves drink, what, what, you know? They're like, man, what? I was like, why are you, uh, what's happening? Who, has, who is making the room crazy? And like, man, we made some money, so we're enjoying the money. And because I told them, when you make money, at least please try and share. Yeah. So after working with Nylon Academy, uh, then, um, I proceeded on and started working with our uh, Pure Fintech Academy, where I, 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 where I also get so many students, okay? Uh, I, uh, that's first, uh, my first achievement uh, uh, are the people that I've taught, okay? And uh, that, are, that are really making money out of this. Okay. And it has really changed their life, their lives, okay? okay. It's, it has really changed their lives. And I meet so many people and they're like, you know what? Isma really like what you're doing really believe in you and please keep it up so that's my first achievement secondly my second achievement has been uh, meeting so many people as well I've met so many people okay and I've learned from them they have learned from me so that's the second achievement okay then as I proceed on with uh, pure fintech academy um, I then I had a thought in my mind I was like because uh, before I started working with all these guys, I wanted to come up with my own company. I wanted to be me, okay? So I was like, one day, one time, I have this idea and I'll, put, I'll, uh, I'll implement it. I'll implement it. So as I was at Pure Fintech, I was like, why don't I implement my dream and start up my own thing, FX Kampala? Yeah. <laughs> then, that's where FX Kampala comes in, of course. I looked out for a, uh, the most appropriate name, you know, that can at least relate Uganda into the world of Forex. Yeah. The, short, the, short, the, short, the, short, the short term of Forex, FX, FX, and then Kampala relating to Uganda. So that's where FX Kampala starts. So I started FX Kampala. Of course, I had, I had people, okay, because I used to meet a lot of people I've taught both young and elderly, okay? I've taught doctors, I've taught lawyers, I've taught MPs, I've taught like, at least in my, uh, uh, cause I've been trading for the past three and a half years now, but at least I've tried my level best to share the little knowledge that I had. In the due course of sharing this knowledge, I've at least uh, been in position to also, you know, uh, get, and get to learn so many other things. And so, <laughs> what would you like to tell the people mm. 
let's say, I, I don't call it my generation, but mm. it's starting to look like that. Mm. Yeah, okay, like people. Uh, personally, I think I started doing Forex. I, it's been about coming to 11 years. Wow, yeah, so it's been, a, you know, from the dark ages. Mm. Yeah? <laughs> Where I think if people are skeptical about it right now, mm. back then it was more than being skeptical. It was, uh, it was a taboo yeah, to okay. do something like that. Mm. But what do you have to tell them yeah, now that, uh, you know, I think it's out in the open. Yeah, I think uh, being skeptical about it is no longer something that is, uh, you know, being skeptical is now not, I don't think it's a mindset of many people. Mm. Yeah, it is something that is there. It's being done in so many countries, everywhere. Mm. Anyone who surfs on the net, uh, you go to YouTube, Facebook, mm. uh, wherever, there are adverts with uh, Forex brokers and all these other instruments that are out there. Mm. So basically, it is... Uh, it's the business of the time right now. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So uh, for those who are okay, I understand why people are skeptical. Mm -hmm. Yeah. There is the the fact of uh, making losses. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, obviously, by being a trader, you've made a yeah. number of losses. Yeah. yeah? Okay. But uh, the loss I want to discuss with you is that first loss. Mm -hmm. uh, you see, when you study forex, the prospects are quite big. Yeah, the money you can make is quite big. The dreams are very, very big. Mm. So the investment that you put in initially, mm. um, it matches those expectations that you have. Yeah? And nine times out of ten, every trader loses that first investment. Mm. Yeah? Either very quickly or it's a slow death. Yeah? It is something very painful. Mm. Yeah? So uh, how was your experience with that scenario? And... How did you overcome it and how did you manage to even stay in the game and push harder after such a loss? John, uh, well, uh, for that, actually, uh, it's honestly that every person or every time you deposit, every, your first deposit <laughs> is always lost. <laughs> Believe you me, it's always lost. And it's, I lost the money. I lost the money. I remember I, put, I was trading with a certain brokerage. And um, I suddenly deposited. Of course, also depositing was an issue by that time, of course, you know, uh, with the Rosary issues, you know. Uh, then I went, through in a, I went through a lot, of course, and then finally I deposited. But then I traded because, uh, of course, I first made money because I made money because I was putting in big lots, of course, with yeah. la lacking discipline, consistency, you know, um, uh, without good uh, money management or good psychology. And, you know, I put, I, I used to put in a lot, big lots, okay? And then I made money, but finally lost it, just like the other traders. So I felt so bad, but still within me, I thought with persistency, okay, and consistency, you will always win. So, my, uh, my, uh, uh, what I actually looked for, okay, was like, yes, if I've lost this money, I need to look out for other avenues of how I can make money for me to fund my account again, to practice again, because it's a normal factor here in Uganda. Yes. Uh, the reason as to why most people never uh, move from point A to point B, it's because they lack capital. Yeah. Because yeah. however, how many times you trade on a demo, You'll never get that, you know, experience of trading on a live account. Okay. Uh, again, you can't learn on a demo account, and still you can't learn when the when you're actually still trading ten dollars, twenty dollars on that money because you don't have the good experience out of the market. Okay. The risk you can't risk the market as you're actually supposed to because you're having quite less. Okay meaning that you have to risk a lot, and which would be small on a big account, okay? Mm. Hence, uh, uh, re hence uh, resisting you or uh, burdening you from being, or from uh, moving from point A to point B. Yeah. Now, when I lost that money, I was like, how can I get more money? That's when I resort into training, because I looked at a Forex whereby everyone will be, was like, uh, I'm trading, let me, I'm trading for people which apparently I don't, uh, I don't encourage unless if it is organized yeah. at that level. <laughs> so every person was like, I'm trading either on my own or I'm trading for someone. Yes. Then I'm like, because most of the number, uh, most the highest percentage I, I actually met, the people I met, were more of 
trading by themselves or trading for the other yeah. people. So I'm like, there is, a, there is something that is being left out, okay? We still have other guys, we still have generations, we, have, we still have those people that can't actually trade, but they need how to trade. So I'm like, why don't I resort into trading, okay? Into uh, training, okay, people how to trade. I generate income also for myself, but also adding more onto myself to be in position uh, to trade, but still at the same point, adding onto myself. Yeah. So I started training. I remember I, start, I started trading a certain lady whom I will not disclose. Uh, she, she liked the way I used to deliver. And then after, uh, after all that, she also uh, recommended a son as well. She gave me a son also to trade. So I traded that money, but I also still lost that money. <laughs> then I, I, I realized there was something that was lacking. Yeah. Okay. And that was more information, okay, more uh, reading, okay, and uh, finding my strengths and weaknesses. Yeah. So I went further still into extensive research till when I was in position. I realized I was missing out on money management, risk management, which is an important component of trading that I had left or I had forgotten. So, uh, after going through money management, of course, it's not quite easy, just like the way you can <laughs> say. Of course, you know, they there is uh, the, trading, the trading system carries 10%, uh, money management carries 30%, <laughs> trading psychology carries 60%. Mm -hmm. You know, with trading psychology, all you need is, you know, to uh, overcome fear, greed, and, you know, <laughs> it seems easy, but it's not <laughs> as it is. You have to change who you are yeah. <laughs> in order to succeed. Yeah. So uh, my, uh, my, uh, my, my own solution for the problem of losing money was to get the source of where to get that money. However, it was a bad situation. I really didn't like it. It was quite, quite challenging that time. <laughs> yes. Please, I tell each one of you that is trading, okay, and they are starting to trade, please don't give up. Okay? <laughs> don't give up. Okay? Yeah. You have to persist. You have to... You know, for it, for you to get something out of life, you have to be disciplined, okay? And secondly, consistent. Please consist. At the end of the day, you get the fruits out of trading. So about, uh, you know, the trading psychology and uh, money management, yeah? Um, maybe one important thing to talk about is uh, the possibilities, yeah? the possibilities that lie within Forex trading. Well, our... Uh, the success, uh, I have achieved the success, okay, and uh, though it has been quite challenging, okay, at the beginning level, just like yeah, the replication model of the other businesses, well, uh, apparently what I consider success to me may not be to any other person. Okay. One, I've changed people's lives through forex and training, okay, and I've met a lot of people. That is my f success. Me changing someone's life is my first success. Okay. I don't care uh, what they give to me or what, you know, uh, what I do have okay, out of these people, but at least if I can change someone's life, it's my first success. Secondly, um, the other success is actually meeting so many people. Okay? Uh, people like Marcelino, Mr. Marcelino, <laughs> People, I've met quite a lot of people. I've met uh, MPs, I've met uh, ministers, I've met lawyers, I've met out at this age of mine, okay? I've at least had a chance being front, in front of a lawyer, okay? I've been quite, uh, uh, I've been in front of uh, doctors, I've been MPs and forth. So to me, that's a success. However, I've had quite a lot of achievements, okay? Uh, from Forex, that is FX Kampala, okay, I've had quite a lot of success, but to me, that's the most successful that, success that I've achieved. Okay. So, we're going to be looking at uh, employment in the financial markets, employment in uh, trading Forex, trading stocks, indices, precious metals, uh, basically all the CFDs that are available right now, and Coinbase has just joined Wall Street, so cryptocurrencies have become a major component in the financial markets. Yeah, so uh, what look at uh, how you can find employment 
here in Uganda to find employment in trading forex and you make money and survive. Yeah? You basically survive yeah? because uh, you know there are no jobs. The coronavirus has you know decimated the country. Even those who have jobs may not be getting payment. You know, it's a uh, the situation is really bad. But there's a lot of money in the forex market. A lot of <laughs> money. Yeah? The money we haven't yet made, the money we are making, the money we spend. Uh, you know, every country is within the forex market and all, any country that has a chart in this uh, on MetaTrader 4, uh, every forex pair, if, you know, if, your, if your currency is within those pairs, then your money is in that market. So if you're a trader, whatever money you make, you're going to be withdrawing it from all of these banks combined and all of these countries combined. So there is too much money in the forex market and it's a money market anyway. So if you start trading, you're going to get money out of it and... You know, uh, Mr. Sewan Kambo, Isma has just told us how he has how he has taught people and they have traded, they have made money, they are doing well. Uh, you know, you've just looked at him, he's doing well as well. Yeah, it's uh, you know, it's a uh, it's it's a really good it's a really good activity to do. And yeah, I think the way we normally look at jobs here is you have to go somewhere, get employed, you know, present your CV, then have a job, start reporting from eight to eight, something like that. Yeah, but you know, a job is something that gets you money. Yeah, and this can get you money. Yeah, so uh, Isma, yes, in your own perception, mm. at what level of education can someone start trading? Yes, can you know just uh, from the way you, from the way you've experienced it? You know uh, how young? Uh, okay, let's not say let's not put age in it. If you watch YouTube videos, some guys, some kids who are 10 years old are already trading. True. But for us here in Uganda, for the purposes of uh, uh, bringing down this, uh, this whole issue of unemployment mm -hmm. here in Uganda, uh, what level of education must someone have in order to start, you know, some baby steps? Mm -hmm. uh, what, uh, what level of education should someone be at? Uh, well, that question is quite challenging. However, I'm humbled <laughs> for the question. Uh, well, it depends, I would say. Because uh, when you look at uh, markets, especially the forex market, we have various ways of how we actually do conduct it. Yeah. Okay? Uh, or uh, one, you can do forex, okay, basing on fundamental analysis or looking at the fundamental bit of it, looking it uh, looking at it in the fundamental context bit of it. And then there is also the technical bit of it. Yeah. Now, that also differs at the level of education one has to acquire to do uh, this, <laughs> depending on the appropriate context. Mm -hmm. okay. Now, uh, when it comes to technical analysis, I believe if you know English, okay, yes. then I think you can do technical analysis because this involves looking basically uh, at the charts, study them, okay, have a decision, okay, on whether to buy the market or sell the market based on to market reaction. Because uh, when you're trading, you have the decision, or you have the decision uh, of whether to buy or sell, but you have no control over the market reaction. Yeah. So you basically need to, you know, analyze the charts and forth. So for that, you don't need. Um, quite uh, a, 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 an advanced level of uh, acquisition. But uh, I think if you at least know some English, you can do technical analysis. Because the business that we are doing is fallen. It's not <laughs> local. It's not here, yeah, actually. Yes. <laughs> so you need some bit of English. Yeah. And if you also have the, basis, the basics of, computer, of computing, then you can as well do technicals. So I think the level, the most appropriate level would be senior one for the technical bit of it. Okay. However, for the, for the fundamental bit of it, you need senior six. Because this is when you're going to look at how apparently different economies are standing. Okay? Yeah. You need to look at their employment rate. You need to look at uh, uh, this, uh, CCI, CCPI, CCI. You need to look at um, the interest rates. You need to look at their inflation and forth. So if you uh, pose such a question, Okay, if you're actually training someone, what uh, training someone basically uh, looking at inflation of various different economies, then this person will literally ask, what's the whole thing of you know interest rate? I don't get it. So I think for the issue of fundamental analysis, 
it's better to have uh, uh, to have reached at least form six. Okay. Yes. Yeah. So uh, that okay that uh, issue of uh, okay it makes sense. Yeah, in order to understand inflation rates and imports and exports and how they affect countries, yes, you need some uh, knowledge from our economics classes, mm -hmm. yes. which people may not study in Kamas. Yeah. Yeah, in Kamas, Kamas, I think, is senior one to senior four. Yes, yes. Yeah, then senior five and senior six, there is economics, mm -hmm. of which some people don't even do it. <laughs> yeah, it's... Uh, <laughs> yeah, but... Of course, eh? yes. you get, I don't know how it comes to be, but at least in the new course, Somewhere, somehow, you get to know about these things. At least when you reach by senior six, you at least know something related onto this. Somehow, eh? Yeah. Yeah, okay, that makes sense. Yeah. Now, uh, putting that into the perspective of uh, if someone were to have a job today, yeah, there's some guy out there, yeah, unemployed. He has been applying for jobs in so many places, and, you know, there is, yeah, there is no luck. Or, Someone who got a job is getting paid, mm. but all the money is going in transport, airtime. Yeah? Mm. Then when there is stress at work, mm. obviously when there's stress at work, you have to go somewhere and have a good time. Yeah? Mm. So all the salary disappears eh, in that kind of uh, that kind of situation. Mm. Yeah. Mm. But with this kind of uh, first of all grasping the concept of self-employment in this category, mm. yeah? where you someone has to wake up. And take it seriously, like a job. Mm. Yeah, you have to do analysis in the morning, mm. uh, basically the whole day. Mm. Yeah, you watch the economic calendar mm. as all these events come out as you're watching the chart. Mm. Basically, taking it seriously, the people take their jobs seriously. Yeah, mm. so giving it that time and all that attention. Mm. Yeah, now, uh, in your okay, I think you can. You know, there's a way. There's a way uh, people normally speak. They tell someone, you know, just. Uh, they tell people normally, grow up, yeah, mm. get serious, <laughs> but it never, it doesn't work like that, yeah. Mm. But uh, you know, the forex trading is there. Mm. Uh, uh, thankfully enough, we have peace in Uganda. Uh, I've understood that countries that have issues, mm. they are locked out of the market. Mm. Yeah, they can't deposit. You can't even open an account when you're from certain countries mm. because of uh, you know civil issues. Mm. But uh, no, we are lucky. Yeah, our money is acceptable internationally. We can deposit, we can withdraw. Mm. You know, we have access. Yeah, we are, you know, it's some kind of luck. Mm. <laughs> yeah. mm. So now that uh, maybe I can call it some kind of infrastructure mm. that is already there, some, uh, some uh, invisible infrastructure that mm. is there mm. that is giving people this opportunity uh, to just get into the market mm. and trade. All you have to do is analyze and make the right decision. Yeah? Mm. Now, uh, what would you like to tell that person who is uh, jobless? Mm. Yeah? How can they take this seriously mm. as a job? Uh, like to put their mind in that position that, you know what, I'm going to start trading mm. and I'm going to start making money out of this and I have these plans and I want to achieve these plans. I'm going to set my goals mm. and this is how to do it. Yeah. Now, what advice would you give such a person in this country that is, you know, somehow skeptical about these financial markets? Thank you so much. Well, uh, that uh, such a question is uh, actually orientating about to can I do forex as a job? Yes. Uh, first, before I respond to your question, mm -hmm. when we look uh, forward uh, in what apparently is happening. When you look at basically the major four, rich, uh, four or three richest guys in the world, yeah. you realize they are into financial markets. Yes. Okay. When you look at Elon Musk, is yeah. into stock markets. Yeah. Okay. When you look at uh, 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 Jeff Bezos, yes, yes? Amazon, Amazon yeah. uh, is also what is uh, pushing this guy is not the production; it's actually <laughs> the stock, the IPO. Uh, yes. Okay, <laughs> the stock. Okay, that is pushing this guy, the shares he's yeah. owning, because it's actually turned into financial markets. Yes. So, and the rest of the other guys, the Mark Zuckerberg and forth, all these guys are into financial markets and technology. So, first and foremost, you as uh, you Ugandan that you seated without a job, you have to first believe in technology, because without technology during this era, you're not going to be anywhere. 
Okay. Uh, secondly, forex can be done as a business because of uh, the benefits that is attached to it as a what? As a, as a job. One, when you're to trade forex, basically, you don't need quite a lot of money, just like any yeah. other person. Okay? okay, you can just like any kind of job, eh? the other jobs that we know. So with forex, you can actually start with as low as uh, five dollars. Let me say, yeah. okay, and at least start with that. I'm not saying that you should start with five dollars, but you can actually access the markets and start trading and gain out of the markets with basically small uh, capital. Mm -hmm. Secondly, uh, forex uh, removes the um, uh, brings that. In, brings us to the level, okay, the same level as the rest of the other guys. Uh, uh, the same way you see the markets is yes. totally the same way someone in Massachusetts, someone in Minneapolis, someone in Belmont, someone everywhere all over the world in France, okay. So it's actually bringing, bringing an equ equation like uh, we're all equal. You have equal opportunities to make yeah. money within the forex market. <laughs> so someone who is far, far, far deep in the village has the same opportunity with someone in Monopolis, with someone in Belmont, you know? Yeah. So that's the kind of business you're engaging in. Secondly, uh, you opt, you, uh, when you're to do Forex as a business, there is access to information. Because the same information that you can access uh, in your home, in your home village, okay, at your workplace, okay, can as well be accessed by someone in the US, in the UK. So there is free information that you need at least to start trading. So there is accessibility when you're trading. Yeah. There is also leverage. There is quite a lot of benefits that is attached onto forex trading. Okay, so there is really quite a lot. Secondly, you can withdraw. You can you can withdraw uh, direct even to your mobile money due to the advancement in technology. So you can trade, okay, without leaving your village, okay. You buy the market. You have access to the international markets, okay. You buy and sell with free internet bundles, okay. You buy, sell the market, and withdraw directly without even coming to the town. So that's the beauty with Forex. If you're to do it, if you're looking for a job, please look out for Forex trading. Yeah, I'm really glad that you've said that. <laughs> yeah. I think uh, the jobs we do here in Uganda, compared to the jobs being done, let's say, in New York, uh, in uh, Manhattan, mm -hmm. yeah, I think now anyone has uh, the opportunity to do a job at that same caliber, <laughs> yeah, with those, uh, yeah, with those people, yeah, yeah, which is quite, uh, you know, it's quite amazing, yeah, that we have the infrastructure right now to do that. Yeah, even if internet here might be, uh, might be a bit costly for some people, but you know, if you spend, if you spend, let's say, uh, two hundred thousand on internet a month, and you're trading forex, and you know, you're getting some. You'll obviously get more money than that, yeah. So it's uh, you know, it's quite it's quite something. Mm -hmm. And I was looking at it in terms of a job, yeah? uh, a business, a business. You know, it is a business. It's a business that people do themselves, or they normally employ people and keep them there to to run it. Eh? Mm -hmm. There is a you know, a business is little participation mm -hmm. with the entrepreneur, mm -hmm. but a job is you know the employ whoever is doing the job is fully committed mm. and spends most of their time doing that job. Yeah? So that's what I was looking at forex trading as a form of employment mm. for so many people so that uh, they will give that time uh, and that concentration to that job uh, as they will do any other job. Mm. Yeah? So uh, by doing that, people can be employed in their homes, mm. yeah? whether you're living with your parents or you're living alone or mm. you're in a hostel. Uh, wherever you are, mm. you can be employed mm. yeah, and you can earn money. Mm. Now, uh, you've mentioned about uh, you know, starting with small amounts of money. Mm. Yeah? It's not something I would want to ignore. You know, for the longest period of time, mm. I have been telling people, uh, put $10, put 5 mm. yeah, because of the skeptics, yeah, because of the, you know, the fear mm. that is out there, losing $10 and losing uh, $1,000. Uh, the impact psychologically is very different. Yeah? If I lose 10, mm. tomorrow I'll put another 10 <laughs> and the other day. But if I lose 1,000 in this economy, yeah, to get another 1,000 to just put there, it's, um, it's quite something different, especially for people of a certain mindset. 
Now, if someone is to deposit ten dollars, mm. yeah, um, how would you? Okay, it's little money, yes. and it will carry a very significant risk, obviously. Mm. Yeah, mm. but it's what most people can afford. Mm. Yeah, they might have a lot of money in their pockets, mm. but uh, psychologically. They can afford to put ten dollars. Yeah, they cannot afford to put a hundred dollars. It will, uh, it will incapacitate them to trade even before they begin. Yeah, they will be thinking about what if I lose this money? You know, a uh, hundred dollars is about three hundred and fifty k here. Uh, I can buy this. I can paint my house. I can uh, buy toys for my kids. You know, they, there are so many thoughts that come uh, into their mind. But with small amounts of money. I think someone can ease into the market with this small amount. Yeah? Mm -hmm. And one thing I've discovered is if you trade, let's say if you have an account of, uh, let's say, $10 mm -hmm. and you push it to like $100, mm -hmm. it feels different from when you just deposit $100. Mm -hmm. yeah? When you get this money from this hard labor that we do here, mm -hmm. yeah, and then you put it in there, mm -hmm. and someone who has actually earned and made that money, mm -hmm. Um, the mindset is quite different. The way I will risk my 100, that is 90% profit, mm. and the other one who has 0% profit with, mm. with a block of $100, mm. it's going to be quite uh, challenging for that other person. Mm. So for the majority of the people who are just going to be starting out, to take it seriously, maybe over the course of the next uh, five months, mm. um, from your experience, mm. how can someone manage a ten dollar account and come out victorious. Uh, well, uh, ten dollars, I'll say it's quite uh, less money, yes. but looking at it in that perspective, I can say for you, uh, because uh, basically when we go into trading, there are certain things that we need to pay our attention to. First is risk. Risk is the stake per trade. Mm. Okay. Normally, the books say you're supposed to risk between one to three. Percent. But then I think that principle will not work on ten dollars. Because when you risk one percent of ten dollars, mm. that's something that's something uh, uh, that's approximating to uh, zero point one yes. dollars. So meaning that if you're to trade and you want to grow your ten dollars into a significant figure, you actually have to be risking at least like one dollar, okay? risk one dollar though it's not advisable but you can risk one dollar at the end of the day or at the end of a specific period of time you will see your account grown okay from ten dollars to a certain good figure yes yes um, though you should pay attention to the risk per trade with consistency yes. uh, over the many years those accounts those big accounts where you risk one percent uh, I have, there used to be, uh, there was a company mm. where you'd copy trade. Mm. Yeah? Uh, this company started coming up yeah, over the years. Eh? Mm. And you'd find people with big accounts. Mm. And so people would start copying these trades. But if find someone has an account of about $300,000 mm. and you have about $200 mm. and, you know, copying a trade of that guy would be very risky. Mm. Yeah? Because these guys, um, their trades were not very accurate. Yeah, the trade would take like four months in loss mm. and it would come out mm. at the end of the four months with a profit. Mm. But within that, uh, within that period, mm. people with smaller accounts would get wiped out. Mm. Yeah. Mm. So I was looking at it as um, accuracy mm. in analysis. Mm. Obviously, for someone who has small money, mm. um, the risk is higher. Mm. So in order to avoid taking losses, it is accuracy that is required. Uh, in order to be successful. Mm. Uh, so uh, doing very good technical analysis, mm. number one. Mm. Two, avoiding these, uh, these issues of trading news. Mm. Well, when unfound payrolls comes out, and you know, we used to get excited those days. Mm. Yeah? <laughs> you'd find these uh, news with full buzz, mm. and you'd know that there is money at uh, 4 p.m. <laughs> yeah. Mm. yeah, but uh, in, your, in your experience, how accurate have you been? And uh, for someone to, okay, the fact that in a country like this, 
we are at a disadvantage. Mm. Yeah, the people who are going to trade are going to put small amounts of money. It's unavoidable. Mm. And many people have lost a lot of money mm. by putting those small amounts. Yeah, by putting a big amount has a psychological impact that uh, you know, it just makes it impossible for people to keep on putting that kind of money. Now, in your, ex in your own experience, uh, how would you mentor someone uh, to have that accuracy? What if they are risking a significant amount of their money in the market? Uh, you know, instead of, uh, instead of using the account as leverage, yeah, because they normally use the account to take the shock of a bad decision. Yeah, if you if you made a bad decision, if, if you have $100, you put a trade of a, losses of about 0 0.05, and you make a bad trade, and it's going against you. So normally you use money to cushion that bad trade. You add in like another $300. Yeah, so that if it goes to negative 100, maybe to reach negative 180 or negative 200, but it won't get to negative 400. Yeah, so you use more money to leverage your account so that uh, you know it acts as a shock absorber for that bad trade. Now, what if instead of putting money to absorb the shock, what if we just put knowledge <laughs> and tactics yeah, is, uh, you know, so that in case of, uh, instead of taking a big loss, uh, we counter that with better analysis. Yeah, so that instead of entering at a certain wrong time, you, you enter the precise moment. Yes, I think that uh, you know, they say for, it's an old saying from those days, yeah, that for those who have very big uh, accounts and the ones who have small accounts, the one with a smaller account, you have to work 10 times harder than that guy yeah, to make the same amount as that guy. So we're looking at how can we work 10 times harder yeah, because we're in that position <laughs> where the whole lot, yeah, you know, the, whole, the whole country, people start joining in, they have to work 10 times as hard as a Wall Street guy, yeah, in order to reach that level someday. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank, Thank you. you so much for that question. Uh, well, uh, just like I said earlier, mm -hmm. when we're in the market, we have control over the decisions we make. We make. <laughs> so you, it's upon you to buy or sell the market, but you have no control over the market reaction. Yeah. However, some traders say they are traders are never wrong. It's the market that is always wrong. <laughs> I don't know, but that's what they say. Well, um, I tell this to traders. I always tell this to traders. Um, we have no 100% market analysis. We have no 100% market analysis. If you've made your analysis, <clears throat> if you've made your analysis so perfectly, okay, with technical analysis, Okay? Let's say even you've also done the fundamentals. Yes. But then there are these sudden uh, occurrences that may occur. Let's assume if you're trading Euro USD and you've perfectly, okay, let's say you're trading uh, okay, gold. Okay, you're trading gold. And you've perfectly done your analysis, you've considered your technical analysis, and you've considered your fundamental analysis. But then among the fundamentals, there are those that we have no control over besides the economic factors. Like, say, the bombing, yeah. the speech, you know? Let's say if you've done analysis on the US, Euro USD and then the technicals are good and the fundamentals are good, but then there is an occurrence that happens in yeah. the US, okay, that you suddenly don't know it's all about. So we can't have 100% market analysis. The only solution for that is for you to have a consistency in staking. So if you're to stake, 1% per trade, okay? And that trade that you're stacking 1%, you're aiming for 2%. At the end of the day, I'll give an instance that if you're actually risking 1% on the trade, let's assume you have $100 and you're risking 1%, that is $1. Mm. And that $1 that you're risking, you're aiming for 2% mm. or 3%. Let's say 2% for this, for this, uh, for this time. When, we are, when we're aiming for 2%, you realize that when you're to do 100 trades, let's say you're doing 100 trades, when you're to do 100 trades and you lose 50, 50 trades out of 100 trades, but remember every time you lose, you lose what? $1. Every time you profit, you take what? Two. $2. You realize that when you do 100 trades, okay, and you lose 
50 and you win 50. So you don't need to be uh, to have a win rate of 60% for you to win or have a positive edge over the market. Okay. So even when you lose 40, you lose 60% and you have 40%, you realize that you're losing 60 dollars, yeah. but that is 60%. If you're doing 100 trades, yes. so you lose 60 dollars, then you profit. 40%. But remember, every time you profit, you profit $2. So you get the 40 times 20 times the 2, you will have 80%. So you realize that when you get the 80 minus the 60, still at the end of the day, you're having a profit. So the issue is not you being perfect at your market analysis. Because there is a video released whereby I drew a curve showing that analysis carries 10%. Um, uh, money management, you realize that that's money management that was making you money. And for you to be in position to apply the consistency, okay, of risking one dollar to make two dollars, you're applying psychology. Yeah. So at the end of the day, you realize that you're having a profit. That's what we call having a positive statistical edge at the end of the day. So do not have 100% in your market. Do, never believe that you have 100% of your analysis. The issue is to be consistent, risk a certain percentage that is from one to three percent at the end of the day uh, with discipline and consistency, you're going to have a positive status quo edge. That's the only advice I can give to traders. Now that is, well, that is very good. Uh, it's called risk and reward ratio. <laughs> yeah. uh, where you, you know, if you lose even 70% of the trades yeah. and you win 30%, you're still in profit. Yeah. Yeah. It's quite, it's quite something. Yeah, uh, yeah. Now, for the people who are, want to take it on, uh, who want to do trading as a sort of a side income, yeah, side business, so um, some kind of a secondary income. Yes, please. Now, for that, they will need uh, one money managers. Yeah? They might not be forex traders. Mm. Yeah, but they're going to now go into money management for mm -hmm. someone to manage their accounts mm -hmm. or to put money into this. Okay, I think that's how people have been getting conned eh, mm -hmm. over the past few years. Mm -hmm. You know, bring uh, $10,000, I'm going to give you uh, $500 every week for the next two years, yeah, something like that. Eh? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so um, how should this be approached? Yeah? Because at the end of the day, uh, someone may not even have the ability to trade. Mm -hmm but they might want to give you money or something to, you know, to manage their account for them. Mm. Yeah? Now, that kind, of, uh, that kind of scenario, it's, uh, it's quite challenging mm. yeah? because I think for Forex traders, in your own experience, okay, in my experience, mm. I have met people who are overwhelmed mm. by the power hmm, of Forex. <laughs> yeah? that they see the possibilities that you know, there is... Yeah. There's too much. Yeah, there's too much they can make. Mm -hmm. yeah? After putting an account of about five hundred dollars, and it reaches like one thousand two hundred dollars, mm -hmm. now they start calling for people. Yeah? Mm -hmm. Give me five k. Yeah? Give me ten k. Mm -hmm. yeah? I'm going to grow this money within <laughs> yeah? within a number of weeks. Yeah? And you know things somehow. Uh, you know things get overwhelming yeah? after some point. But for those who want to do it as a side income. Mm -hmm. How would you advise them to invest this money? They won't be traders, but investors. Yeah? And what risks must they be aware of? Uh, well, first and foremost, I should make this clear on air. Mm -hmm. <laughs> no one should promise you a percentage yes. because they have no control over the market. <laughs> now, let's say if they promise you 20% monthly and the first month they give you money, the second month they give you money, and the next month they make a loss. So where are they getting this money to pay you? Uh, so if someone comes and is like, I'll give you this, this percentage, please. I don't believe in that personally. Because I have no control over the markets. Meaning I'll have other sources where I'll have to get money when I make a loss to give you the money. Uh, let me first cut you short. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Sorry for... Cutting you short, but um, the banks banks give ten percent mm. every year. Mm. Yeah. Uh, these other traders promise, I think, ten thousand percent mm. every year, eh, based on uh, 
the statistics that they give people. Uh, so moving forward in this kind of business, should people, assuming you're, if you're going to start taking people's money, mm. Yeah, mm. Um, should you promise them that 10% of the bank every year, mm. uh, meaning it's about 1% every month mm. profit, which I think is reasonable, uh, basing on the risk that is uh, associated with the business. Mm. Yeah. Or, uh, but what should people, uh, because I've, I understand that it's normally the client who pushes mm. Yeah, who pushes for these uh, big amounts mm -hmm. yeah, and keeps on pouring in money and you know try, trying to create some kind of you know some to boost some fire eh, within the trader and yeah, start making more. But um, what is the appropriate percentage okay. that people should? Okay, people can charge whatever they want, mm -hmm. but what should someone expect? Reasoning. Uh, I'll not give expectations. But then first, I'll have to first go back to the question you posed. Yeah. That if you're to have Forex as a secondary yes. uh, income, but then you're not a, particip a participant. First, what you're supposed to do, you have to be first before you invest in Forex. You have to at least have basics. Mm. <laughs> have the basics about trading. Because... Uh, if you don't have basics about trading, someone will come, ask you the money. Give me the money. At the end of the day, I'll give you the such and such a percentage. Mm -hmm. But then, where you give out, uh, uh, where you know the basics of forex trading, I believe with the basic knowledge, someone can't cheat you because information is everywhere. Yeah. Okay? Uh, we have Ugandan traders that you we have people that know how to trade in Uganda. Consult these people. Have the basics about trading before you can invest into the forex market. One, the forex market ha is risky. And it being risky means that it has higher returns. So if you're, to, if you're to go for such higher returns, then you have to also be risky. Yeah. <laughs> so when you have the basics, you come to me, you're like, Isma, I want you to trade for me. Uh, Secondly, I also need to bring this out clearly. Forex is not a scam. The scam comes in at that point when someone asks you the money and you give them the money. Why do you give them the money? Yet you, you can deposit the money yourself having the basics, okay? And you simply give him the logins and the, the, actually the, lo the credentials for your trading platform for them to manage your account. Because you now apparently be in position to see how gradually your account is growing. This guy has, is trading for you, but has no access to your money. That's why we say if you're to have a secondary, uh, uh, you, you to, if you're to have Forex as a secondary uh, 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 input, or sorry, output, or secondary business, you also have to have basics. So by you doing so, meaning that you can create your own account, deposit money, then simply give this guy to manage your account, okay? It's helping you, but it's also helping the trader because if you don't have the basics, here you will come and ask, what happened to my money? The fact is I didn't steal your money, okay? No, did I? Take your money, but the money is in the market because when we are trading, because Forex, the Forex market is carried out over the OTC, okay? When I'm buying, someone else is selling. <laughs> We do not have a centralized, uh, centralized system. It being decentralized doesn't mean it's disorganized. Eh? <laughs> it's just not centralized. So when someone is buying, the other person is selling. So when I lose your money, it's not that it's me who is poor at trading. <laughs> it's probably could be from uh, the percentages you asked for that I can't raise. The pressure. The pressure. So. <laughs> so forex itself is not a scam. Also, the fact being that you have basics can help you to be in position to monitor how your money is being managed. So if someone is, has made profits, okay, then share those profits. So we don't have a specific percentage that we should have at the end of a specific period of time. So we shouldn't pause out any percentage. So if I'm managing your money, let's simply share the profits that I've made because anything can happen. Mm -hmm. 
You can make a lot of money, but still you can lose. The only condition should be you have to also be uh, uh, serious about your investment. Tell these guys not to risk a lot because by you risking a lot, okay, you're putting your capital in danger. Yeah. It's red because in Forex we have red and blue. So ask for this guy for a genuine percentage to also protect your capital. Because when we are trading, I teach guys to trade to replicate the model of a daily or a normal business. Because in businesses we make losses and we make profit. Um, okay, I think <laughs> that time, oh, we're running out of time. Yeah, but uh, what closing remarks do you have for today? Well, thank you for inviting me first. It's Mark 24. It's been a pleasure. Uh, well, this is to the traders. Traders, please believe in, believe in your trading systems. Because these systems will, never, will not work all the time. You get it? Just like in the day-to-day -day businesses, we have both good and bad days. So there is that period whereby you're going to experience a strip of losses, but then there is also that period where you're going to experience a strip of profits. Okay? But please stick to your strategies, don't be greedy, and also be consistent. Yeah, so we've been, uh, we've just had Isma in the studio. It's been a pleasure having uh, the famous Mr. FX Kampala himself. <laughs> yeah. We shall be having him back on the show uh, so many times in the future because there are so many things that we need to look at. Yeah, an experienced trader like Mr. Isma Sewa Kambu will give us a lot of insight into the depths uh, of trading, you know, trading in the night, uh, trading on these small charts and Try to be consistent in a small chat is quite something difficult. <laughs> in a five-minute chat, it's quite, it's quite difficult. Yeah? So when we come back next time, we're going to go into, uh, we're going to be looking at charts. We're going to be looking at charts and we're going to do some very critical analysis uh, for these forex charts and uh, commodities and indices and see the differences in all these charts. You know, our forex pairs don't run like commodities and precious metals. All these charts are different, even if they're all on the MetaTrader 4 platform, but they all have their differences. Some are backed by countries, others are backed by companies, others, we don't know what backs them. Uh, and now we have our cryptocurrencies there, apparently backed by the blockchain system. So uh, there are so many variables from where these charts actually come from, and where they come from is what predicts how we are going to trade them and analyze them fundamentally. So that was it for today. Thank you for watching. Goodbye.